Yo yo yo, what is going on Raiders, the boss is back and welcome to another video here on my channel. In the last one we touched slightly on the Fibros potion, but we didn't go too much into detail on how you can use it the best way in your advantage to destroy your opponent's base, or in that sense the bunker troops, especially when they have bombardiers in their troop bunkers. Those are basically the troops which can make it really hard to 3 star a well built stronghold, but today we're gonna check that one out in just a minute. The troops I've been using in those fights were a combination of marauders, healers, gauntlets, bombastics, archers and raiders. So quite a complex troop variation, however it's a very effective one against the layouts which we're gonna face now. The last thing before we start, we focus with the strategy which we're gonna use on bases where troop bunkers are not placed in the center because for those you need a different approach which I might show you in another video. So let's start with the first battle against Kitana 111 from the clan lion and since this player has bombardiers in the troop bunkers it's a perfect way to illustrate the effectiveness of the fibrous potion once again. Before we gonna use it we first need to destroy those troop camps to make our raiders go close to them so that the fibrous potion can have an effect on those troops. This takes always a little time but as soon as the troop camp goes down we can activate it and send in our raiders on those bunkers on the right and on the left side. Even though there is a wall between the raiders and the bunkers, the bunker troops still take some damage and 5 of the raiders are enough to clear out every single troop. Unfortunately one of the bombardiers on the right side survived, but the small army consisting of marauders and cannoneers should be able to take it down. But what is that, the cannoneers don't lock onto the bombardier and that's why he's able to throw one bomb on our troops. Also we lost a lot of time due to the use of the fire burst potion, so now everything has to go fast. Let's use our bombastics and just have a look at this, they trigger so many traps that our troops can easily move inside of the base and normally they would have killed a lot of our marauders right in the beginning, but that's not gonna happen anymore. Now let's use the berserk barrel to make our cannoneers go crazy and tower after tower goes down. I hope the effect of the berserk barrel lasts long enough to take down these dragon towers with the cannoneers because they are of course the main threat here. So far everything looks pretty good, our troops are spread out and are dominating the space from two sides and it seems like the gauntlet and the cannoneers are moving into the center of the base to take down the stronghold which is also important because then the crystal spires will be blown into pieces as well. Unfortunately it doesn't look like that time is on our side and also the last remaining troop bunkers on the top will cost us some troops but after they go down we have here enough troops to go for the third star. The reason why I only go for two troop bunkers with the fire burst potion is that it takes too long to take care of all of them and obviously I need to bring more raiders for that and under normal circumstances our army should be able to deal easily at least with one of them during the fight. So to make this approach against the stronghold work consider to take at least two of them out so that you don't need to concern for other troops from the enemy to pop out in front of you. Obviously time is running out now and since Kitana has some more buildings standing on the bottom of the base we won't be able to 3 star it but of course that was only due to the lack of time and you also need to consider that I didn't use any clan troops in this fight which is normally a must have against the stronghold 10 with bunker troops. Keep in mind filled up troop bunkers always indicate that the opponent is prepared to defend himself against every approaching troop, so that means towers are reloaded and traps are all activated to repel our attacks. Therefore 96% damage is decent, of course I would have loved to see the here the third star but I'm sure the next fight will go better for us. And in this one we're gonna face the base of Faru, again with bombardiers in the troop bunkers. So you should know now what's gonna happen. We're gonna take them out with our raiders right in the beginning and to fight against this base I also use the draft saboteurs to make sure that we're gonna get now the 3 stars for sure. So once we're done dealing with the bombardiers we only need to take care of the ammunition factory at the bottom and we also need to get rid of that troop bunker simply to be certain that our cannoneers will find their way into that bottom quarter of the base. Now let's use the rest of our bombastics to blow a hole into the wall. Then we're gonna follow up with the main push consisting of marauders and tealers and while they are breaking through the last line of walls, our archers will take out the cloud beacon to make our cannoneers follow the marauder push. Now we need to deploy almost all of our troops and as they are all gathered on the same spot it's time for the berserk barrel to launch a full scale attack on everything that is still standing. Once you get used to the space type I think it's one of the easiest to deal with so remember when you see a similar base like this, sneak into the center simply by using 4 bombastics. There's almost no way you cannot get at least 2 stars. But still we need to be careful that our cannoneers in the center don't die since they are not covered at all by our marauders who unfortunately went into a different direction. However as only a few towers are left this battle is gonna end soon in our favor and that means a clean 3 star victory. 
And now I actually realize that this guy is missing some clan walls, so we approach this base in a more difficult way than it was necessary. But at least you can see that my strategy against such bases works out quite well in every situation. In other words, the battle comes to an end and for the last fight of the day, let's check out a stronger stronghold to get here a good ending. Here we go against Imposter and this stronghold looks more like a good base. This time without the drafts of the turrets, but we start straight away with our fibers potion to get rid of the Bombardiers also in this battle. So this is gonna be the second troop bunker we're gonna take care of before we destroy this base. Once again we start off with the Moroda and Hilo combo and our goal is to get our cannoneers again into the center of this base, otherwise we need to go through dozens of war layers which is gonna cost a lot of time. Consequently we send in another group of Marauders into the battle so that we can penetrate the space from two sides. To have such a large group of Marauders, I have substituted the gauntlet for 6 more Marauders because there is a limit to what we can do with that guy. With the incoming cannoneers we need to destroy that Dragon Tower and the Crystal Spire right in the beginning with the Berserk Barrel and also I had to pay attention to the placement of the cannoneers because if they turned left they would have destroyed the troop bunker but my goal here is to take care of that in the end of the battle. You might have noticed that I had a little misplacement of the Berserk Barrel, I wanted to save it up to destroy the stronghold in the center but we're okay for now. In this stage we're coming to the most important part of this battle. We're having a group of cannoneers now in the center and since they are not covered we need to protect them with the healing barrel since they can do a lot of damage from that position. And to make them even more destructive we're gonna use here the ranger potion as well. So we're set up perfectly here, we destroy the space from three sides, the marauders sacrifice themselves and the cannoneers are responsible for cleaning up the rest. In addition we're doing better time wise and the last remaining towers shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as we make sure that our cannoneers in the center don't die. However now we suffered some losses due to the shock rod traps and I just realized that we're having here only one healer remaining so this battle surprisingly is becoming a close match here in the end. But since we have so many cannoneers left, nothing in this defense can prevent the defeat of this base. Even the last remaining troops of our opponent can't change anything about that. Once we reach this troop bunker, all of our cannoneers have enough time to focus on them without getting distracted by anything else, which is usually the reason why those bombastics are so hard to deal with. Because backup troops of the marauders are not fast enough to prevent those deadly bombardments of them. So with the Bombardiers going down we only need to take care of the last remaining buildings and this gives us the third star in this match. Alright I hope you could see that it's worth to trade just a few raiders against the bunker troops, it gives a better start into the battle and make sure that you don't need to deal with them while you should be actually concerned with fighting the towers. So to wrap it up the fire burst potion is a good way to make your life easier and to limit risks during the fight. So here we are again at the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it once again. If you want to watch another video which I've done last time, you can click on the thumbnail right now and you'll see a video about 4 things you've never tried in Cloud Raiders, I'm sure you didn't do them for now. If you haven't subscribed yet, you have now the chance to hit the subscribe button and also if you've enjoyed this video, drop a like, I'd appreciate it. This is it for me, have a great raid, peace out.